uh, so welcome to this new lecture of my online lecture series in this new lecture we have a new topic that is impact of jet uh, in previous lecture we have studies what are hydraulic machine how the classification of hydraulic machine is done as well as different type of hydraulic turbines what are the various components of this turbine what are the working principle of this turbine how these turbine are different from each other so in this lecture we are going to study uh, how this turbine is run by the jet of water and what we are basically doing we are basically uh, using this water that is stored in a dam or any reservoir for electricity production in the dam then this water is conveyed out through a pipe of large diameter so this pipe of large diameter is known as penstoke and through this penstoke the water is supplied to this uh, turbine and due to this water supply when water strikes this turbine blades so this shaft is moving as well as the runner is moving so basically a shaft is transmitting this energy to the generator and this generator is converting this energy into electricity so what we are basically doing we are converting the energy from one point to another point or we can say we are converting the energy from one form to the other form that is from hydraulic energy of this water to the electrical energy basically or mechanical energy basically so this slide shows you the, the impact of jet so first of all we have to study what is a jet so this uh, water which is filled inside this uh, pan stoke when moves in the pan stoke and then it is supplied to this turbine so it is supplied to a nozzle and this nozzle we are using is a converging shape of nozzle so from this converging shape of this nozzle when water takes uh, place outside so this water takes place or it strikes the turbine in the form of a very thin or you can say very uh, sharp jet of water so this jet of water is considered as our jet it is also written that as the water comes out in the form of a jet from a nozzle of pen stoke it is to be remembered that uh, what kind of nozzle we are using so we are using a conical or converging shape of nozzle this uh, nozzle is attached to this uh, pen stoke but it is also considered a part of this turbine so this jet of water will strike the blades of this turbine and these blades are also called plates so what are these blades we know that the blade is of uh, uh, <coughs> cast iron or steel so these are considered as plate so when this jet is applied to this plate so this will insert and this will exert some force on these blades and this force is called force exert by the jet on the plate as well as when the force is applied on the jet so according to this newton third law the jet will also exert some force on this uh, plate and the plate will also exert some force on the jet so these are action and reaction for of each other so we have to count what kind of force and what amount of this force is applied by the jet on the plate or we can say what is the reaction component of this applied force by the plate on this jet so uh, there are two types of forces in here one is a force that is applied on the plate by the jet of water and that is second is the reaction that is applied on the plate by the water jet so next so what is the principle behind this impact of jet so 
what is the meaning of this impact object so it is it is basically for the impulse type of turbine first of all so what is the meaning of this impact of jet so in this turbine we are applying impulse type of force on the blade so that this impulse type of force will produce an impact force on that turbine so this jet is having some force that is called impact of this jet so the basic principle that is used in analysis of this impact of jet on the plate is the principle or uh, the law of impulse momentum equation or we can say it is generally the conservation law of momentum or we can say it is the use of the second law of newton's motion what it says it says according to this principle the momentum of any container is also always conserved or we can say in other words uh, we are using the newton's second law that is what it is newton's second law it is simply it is called force exerted equal to mass into acceleration or theoretically we can say that when a force is applied to a body so it register that force and that force will be equal to the product of mass into change of this velocity or change of this position of this body so uh, mathematically we will write f equal to this m into a where what is m here in our case and the m that is mass of water coming out from this uh, jet and what is a that is change in velocity of the jet so what is the change of this velocity of the jet so when first of all uh, first of all the jet is striking from water and it is coming from this nozzle so at section 118 nozzle the velocity of jet will be zero and after striking at 22 it is also zero so this plane system this plate system and jet system is commonly termed as a closed volume or it is also known as a system of continuum as we studied in fluid mechanics 1 what is a continuum system so we have studies the conservation of law of moment and always this continuum system is acting for a combined procedure so now uh, so this uh, right part of this slide will show you the uh, position of this jet and how this jet is striking with the plate so see the blade of this turbine will acting like a plate and this plate is shown here and the red portion and the reddish portion of this diagram will show you that nozzle so see the first part of nozzle is the pipe or the, that pipe is also known as pen stoke pipe and we are using a converging nozzle here so water that is dotted portion is the water portion the water is coming through a jet and striking the plate or blade so this this arrow is showing to you the direction of this water after striking the water is diverging into this two layers so this is show you the actual position of this water layer now this f equal to ma so what is f here f is the net force acting on the fluid mass and also we can say what is f that is the force exerted on the plate by the jet and we can also say its reaction that is f dash that is equal to net force registered by the plate or we can say that that is the force applied by the plate on the jet of water so here what is a a that is acceleration it is dv by dt and what is f that is m into dv by dt so f equal to d bracket mv by dt so this mv is known as our momentum and this is called momentum conservation or principle of momentum conservation so this is how we are uh, having some so this is how we are having some uh, that is classification of uh, this jet and uh, plate combination so what are the various cases in that jet and plate are striking each other so first of all
the force exerted by the jet on a stationary plate in this case we are considering that the plate is stationary or the blade of turbine is stationary so there may be three cases one is the number a case that is place it vertical to the jet and case b is plate is inclined to the jet and plate case 3 is that is plate is curved so what is the meaning of this curved plate in the lecture when we have studied turbine uh, of that pelton type so this turbine of pelton type or any other type of turbine in this turbine we have studied that its blade or its plate are made double semi elliptical or double hemispherical or symmetrically shaped so this type of shape profile is known as curve profile while in the case of this kaplan turbine or any reaction turbine that we are using this plate which are mounted on the runner in the vertical shape so this is a case of plate is vertical now what will be the second case not only the jet is moving sometimes what is there the plate is also moving with some velocity so this case is known as the force exerted by the jet on the moving plate so when there are three cases for that that force exerted on a jet by a moving plate so that is case number 1 number 1 is plane is plate is vertical of the jet and number 2 is plate is inclined and number 3 the plate is curved so there may be basically broadly we can classify there are two types one is when the plate is steady or the plate is stationary and second is the plate when the plate is moving so there may be six con combinations i will be showing this in new slide so these are some diagrams these diagram will show you the relative position of this plate so first of all we have to see this the first portion of this diagram in that force exerted by a jet on vertical plate when the plate is stationary so see when the plate is stationary so this large diameter pipe or generally known as pen stoke will be having some last portion this converging last portion is called nozzle this nozzle is of steel and this water is striking in the form of a jet and then the jet is striking uh, to the blade of this turbine so this the blade of this turbine here is a plate that is vertical and kept stationary so when the water is striking so the water is diverging into two parts these arrows are showing these two parts now when we are moving forward so then second in the second diagram that is on the bottom left corner so what is it is it is the jet striking the inclined plate so what do you mean by this inclined plate that means the plate is vertical uh, plate is not vertical it is inclined at some angles in the turbine component we have studies that it is the facility in this kaplan or any uh, so called you can say kaplan or francis turbine that we can adjust the blade or the blade are adjustable if you have remember i have told you what is the meaning of this blade is adjustable that we are changing the angle of this blade according to the speed of this water so this is the case of that turbine where the blade are adjustable or the blade are adjustable so here uh, we can see the plate are tilted by a angle theta with the horizontal so that uh, this water when striking to this plate from the jet will also diverge into two section but the angle that is made by this water divergence will be the theta angle and what are the two components of this uh, theta force so the force will be uh, divided into this two component one force is in horizontal direction that is called fx and other force will be in vertical direction that is fy so what will be this fx force this fx force will be uh, fn cos 90 minus theta or we can say fn sin theta what is this fn fn is the normal force and the force that is acting in the normal direction to the plate but we have to count the force into horizontal direction or vertical direction so we are taking this fx and fy 
what will be the case of f y it will be f n sin 90 minus theta or we can say f n cos theta now we are moving to third case that is jet striking a fixed curve plate at center so what is basically a curve plate in our turbines we have studies that our blades are make made in the shape of that is double hemispherical uh, so this symmetrical double hemispherical shape is our curve plate shape and when water is striking at the center of this curve plate so this will be governing through the uh, curve area of this uh, curve plate so this water is moving with the curved surface and it is also having the velocity see in this first two cases the velocity of this plate is not having any component why because the velocity is in a perpendicular direction so this velocity is called v but in this curve shape the velocity is in inclined direction so that we have to resolute this uh, or resolve this velocity into two components so what are these two components the one component is the horizontal component that is v cos theta and what are the second component the second component is v sin theta that is the vertical component of this velocity so now when we are studying such type of uh, problems so we have to calculate what are the two component in the next uh, coming slides i will be showing the, the derivation of this uh, velocity or we, we will be also doing some numericals uh, based on such uh, principles now in our next case uh, we are solving some uh, problems but uh, what is the fourth case of this uh, turbine and this combination in the fourth case what we are doing actually so we what we are doing actually we are not only the uh, we are not only considering the stationary turbine case we are also considering the case of this uh, this uh, a vertical or a moving turbine moving turbine plate so according to this moving turbine plate uh, the force exerted that is the force exerted on the plate by the jet or we can say uh, it's vice versa that is the reaction of this force by the jet on this turbine so <clears throat> basically what it is uh, using the we are using the uh, concept of that is momentum con conservation and next is the concept of that Newton's second law and what it says it says the force that is exerted by the plate on the jet or it can be seen that the force observed or exerted by the jet on this turbine plate or turbine plate will be equal to the product of that is mass into acceleration and what is acceleration here the acceleration is uh, given by uh, the change in velocity divided by change in time so it is the rate of change of this velocity and what is the velocity here so velocity velocity is rate of change of this position of this this jet from one point to another point so basically we are using these two principles in the next slide we are having some numerical problems so we are using this concept for this so these are the various types of uh, cases uh, which can considered which can be considered while we are studying the impact of this jet on the plate so these are different cases the first case is force exerted by jet on vertical plate that is stationary second case is jet striking the stationary inclined plate third case is the jet striking a fixed that is a stationary curve place this this is the this third case is our mostly uh, used case in the turbines the next is when the plate is moving and it is vertical so that jet is striking so in this case we have to find the relative velocity now we are deriving the uh, derivation so let us move forward so this is our topic that is jet striking the horizontal or vertical that is uh, stationary plate so what is the meaning of this 
stationary plate the meaning of this stationary plate is that the plate is mounted over the blade or any runner and it is not moving so that the relative velocity of this plate will be equal to zero so what is the basic or fundamental principle behind this calculation uh, the principle of uh, Newton's second law or it is called Newton's second law in that the summation of all forces equal to m into a where sigma f that is summation of f is the net force acting on this fluid mass m is the mass of the fluid and what is a a is the acceleration or we can say this a equal to db by dt and this db by dt may be when released so this dvm by dt what is vm here vm here is the momentum so what is f it is the change in momentum divided by time or it is the rate of change of this momentum so let us consider a diagram that is in the corner of the top corner of this uh, slide here a nozzle is shown what kind of nozzle we are known we are using so this nozzle is a diverging type steel nozzle so when water is striking in a jet so this this dotted shape is just like a jet of water and this jet is also known as closed volume of water so we are using the term c dot v what is this c dot v this is closed volume so when jet is coming from this nozzle so at the entry point of this nozzle the velocity is v naught or v zero and the discharge is q so we have to note down one point in this uh, derivation so the point is that we are considering the continuity equation so what is a continuity equation in our continuity equation we are considering this uh, discharge is constant that means if we are having a closed volume so that in closed volume of pipe or any uh, other case if there are not some losses so this discharge is constant that means at section 1 and section 2 a1 v1 that will be equal to a2 v2 so we are using this continuum equation or continuity equation so this rectangular piece is our plate and this hatching shows that the plate is mounted over the runner that means it is fixed when water is striking you, you can see in the figure when water is striking in the form of jet so the velocity at the portion or the section where it is striking is v1 what is the velocity at the entry point it is v1 and what is the velocity at this this water is diverging into two directions so what is the velocity of this exit this velocity is called v2 so we are having two type of component of this velocity one component is v2 in upper direction and two component is v2 in downward direction so this v2 in downward direction is known as v2 dash due to this symmetry of this diagram v2 should be equal to v2 dash so what is v2 here it is the exit velocity in x direction in <coughs> closed volume so what is a closed volume in exit velocity in this x direction closed volume is considered so what is v1 v1 is inlet velocity in x direction in closed volume what is f x so fx is the force exerted on the jet force exerted on jet by this plate let's we move forward so these are three steps for deriving this derivation so what is fx here fx is the force exerted on the jet by the plate and what is f dash here f dash is force exerted by the plate by the jet on this plate so we are using newton's equation that is sigma f equal to m a so this x direction we are considering the study in this x direction so what will be sigma f it will be f x so what is f x here that is equal to m into a x what is a x here so this a x is the acceleration in this x direction that means we can also say this acceleration is a rate of change of this velocity in this x direction so f x equal to m into v2 x minus v1 x why v2 x minus v1 x we, we are taking we are taking this v2 x minus v1 x because it is the force exerted on the jet by this plate so initial velocity minus final velocity we are applying here divided by time so this v2 x minus v1 x divided by time and we are taking this time divided by in the side of m so that m divided by time will 
generate a new term that is m dot or m star so this m dot is called mass rate yeah mass flow rate so when we move forward in this next uh, slide so that is m dot equal to uh, how we define this mass rate this mass rate is called rate of mass that is coming out from the nozzle in the form of this jet of water so what is the mass rate it is mass divided by this uh, time so how can we write mass we can write this mass as rho this this one is rho into volume and divided by time so this volume divided by time is called what volume or uh, how much amount of volume is coming out in a second so this v by t we can see that it is q q means discharge so what will be the formula for this m dot or mass rate that is will be equal to rho into q so then rho and what is q we know that from the continuity equation q is area into this velocity and where from where the water is coming out the water is coming out from the nozzle so at this nozzle section 1 this velocity is v naught and the discharge will be equal to that is area into this velocity so here we are using the formula that is m dot equal to rho into area into velocity and how we can write this area we can this uh, we can write this area since the jet is in circular form or nozzle is in circular form so this area is pi by 4 into d square so we can further divide this area into pi by 4 d square so this is the expression for this m dot now since fx is the force exerted on jet by the plate but we have to determine the force exerted on plate by the jet so from we are using newton's third law what is newton's third law every equal every action has its equal and opposite reaction so see if fx is a reaction so what will be the reaction it will be we can say it is f dash x and the amount of this fx and this f dash x will be equal so this f dash x will be coming out from in this equation that is m dot into that is v1 x minus v2 x why we are writing here v1 x minus this v2 x because it is the force exerted on of the uh, force exerted by the jet on the plate so when the jet is exerted so this we can say that this in our previous slide so it is the velocity at entry is v1 and the velocity is at exit is v2 so what will be the change in velocity this will be the initial velocity minus this final velocity so what is initial velocity here it is v1 and what is final velocity here it is v2 so when we are talking about the force exerted by the jet on this plate so this uh, force exerted on the jet by this plate will be that is m dot into change in velocity that is what is change in velocity initial velocity minus this final velocity that is v1 x minus v2 x so now we can write this m from previous equation that is rho into a into v naught what is v naught it is the velocity when uh, velocity at a section where the jet is striking so see what is v1 x here so see in that previous diagram v1 is uh, v1 x is in the velocity in x direction so that is v1 and what is the velocity at point 2 in x direction so see we cannot see we cannot see any velocity in that uh, x direction only the velocity in y direction at second point will be y2 so what is y2 v2x so this v2x will be equal to 0 so this equation will be governed by fx f dash x equal to that is gamma into area into velocity bracket v1 minus 0 why we are putting it 0 because when water is striking to the plate so it will be diverging in y direction now let's uh, move forward so we are having this f dash x equal to rho a into v naught into v1 what is v naught here so see in the previous diagram v naught is the velocity at the point or the section where we are having this uh, jet is striking z is coming from this nozzle and what is v1 here so v1 is the velocity at the section where the jet is striking the plate so what will be the force exerted on the plate by the jet the force exerted on the plate by the jet is rho into a into v naught in v1 this equation will be very helpful when we are determining this uh, so called you can say force exerted on the plate by this jet in uh, and we are following the numerical in this lecture so now we are using this formula 
so we can do one thing see we are doing one thing that we are converting this v0 into v1 uh, v0 into v1 in a single term that is either or v0 term or v1 term so uh, let's move forward now what we are doing we are applying Bernoulli equation between section 00, 0 and section 11 so what is our section 00, 0? this one is section 00, 0 at the starting point of jet and what is section 11 that is the point or section when the jet is striking this plate so what will be the velocity at section 00, 0 that will be v0 and what will be the velocity at section v1 that will be v1 so that is uh, Bernoulli equation. So what we, what is our Bernoulli equation? In our Bernoulli equation, we are using this equation uh, various times in this subject. So what will be the Bernoulli equation? Uh, according to this Bernoulli equation, the pressure head plus velocity head or kinetic head plus datum head at the two points, that is point zero or point one is same so what is the first of all we are writing this uh, total head in uh, section 00 so what is the total head in section 00 that is p naught divided by rho g so that is pressure head that is p divided by rho g so here section 00 so here pressure is p naught and that is also rho g and what is the kinetic or velocity head here the velocity head here is v naught square by this 2g and what is the datum head so datum head is z naught similarly we can see about this section 11 so what is the pressure at section 11 so see the pressure at section 11 is rho g and what is the velocity at section uh, 11 that is v1 so we are writing p1 by rho g for this uh, pressure head and v1 square by 2g for this velocity or kinetic head and this z1 for this datum so here we are uh, assuming something so or we can say there are some assumption so the following assumption if we are using so we can derive this new equation uh, that uh, first assumption is this the change in datum head between this entry and exit is very small so that is neglected since the turbine is mounted on a ground or so that the datum head is assumed same for this section 00 and section 11 so we can cancel this z0 and z1 now the point is that the body is smooth so therefore there is no change of velocity between this entry and exit point and what is the third point the impact of losses here is neglected so that in this equation we are not writing the hf or hl in the second part so why we are cancelling this p1 and p0 because we know that in impulse turbine the pressure is atmospheric so p1 is also equal to atmospheric pressure and p2 is also equal to atmospheric pressure and p0 is also equal to this atmospheric pressure so this p1 and p0 are similar that is equal to atmospheric pressure so we are cancelling it after cancelling these terms we are getting a expression from here we are getting an expression from here that is v0 equal to v1 so we are putting this v0 and v1 equation in this previous equation that is f dash x so what is this f dash x so this is the force exerted on the plate by this jet will be rho into a into v naught v1 that is so we are putting this v1 equal to v naught so what is f dash x so that is it is equal to rho into a into this v naught square so this will be our final equation that will be used in our uh, numerical problem so this jet striking the horizontal stationary plate topic is our completed and what is the amount uh, if anyone will ask you what is the amount of this force exerted of the jet by this plate so this force is equal to f dash x equal to rho into a into v naught square so what is v naught here v naught is the velocity of this jet when it is coming from this nozzle and what is the rho rho is the density of water we can take the density of water as thousand kilogram per meter cube and what is the area area is the uh, area of this jet and this is pi by 4 that is d square now uh, we are using doing some numerical which are asked in your rgbb exam so let us move forward for this numerical problem so now we are solving some numerical problems here so first of all we are having this problem number one that is a, a very good problem so let's move forward for this new numerical problem 
so i am writing this i am reading this numerical problem and then after we are having some data and then we can calculate some values from this so what is written here find the force exerted by a jet of water of diameter 75 mm on a stationary flat plate when the jet strikes the plate normally with the velocity of this 20 meter per second so we are uh, using some data so what is data given to us that is diameter of jet what is diameter of jet if we can see in this diagram so this dotted portion is jet and what is this diameter of jet that is data diameter of this closed volume so this diameter of this closed volume is given to us that is 20 uh, that is given to us that is 75 mm or we can say if we divide in thousand so we are getting this into the form of this meter so d equal to 0.075 that is meter now we can calculate this area of this z that is pi by 4 into d square so that's the area is we are getting Uh, that is point double four 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 one seven. So that is in the area. Now, what is the velocity of this plate, or we can say the v naught velocity? So that is what is the velocity? The velocity is twenty meter per second, or we can say it is v naught or v one. So what we have to find? We have to find the force exerted by the jet of water on a stationary plate. So see, it is a stationary flat plate. So this is case. number first and we have derived a relation for this case number first in our previous slide what is this force exerted by the jet on this flat plate that is f dash s equal to rho into a into this v not square so we'll apply this equation that is rho into a into v not square so what is rho here that is the density of water we can take the density of water as 1000 Kilogram per this meter cube. So what is F here? Thousand into this area of plate into twenty in newton. So what will be the governing force? That is one seven double six into eight point eight newton. So this will be our answer. Hence we can calculate the force exerted on the stationary flat plate by this. Uh, so call you can say jet. Now we are moving to the next form uh, numerical that is very important. So see, we are having our numerical number two. That is very important for this uh, uh, RGPB exam as well as from gate exam point of view. So see, water is flowing through a pipe at an end which nozzle is fitted. The diameter of this nozzle is hundred mm, and the head of water is center to nozzle is hundred. Find the force exerted. If the velocity is given point nine five, so see the data is given that diameter of nozzle or the diameter of jet. Or see what is the diameter of nozzle that will be equal to the diameter of jet. That is point one meter. What is head that is equal to hundred? That means the height of this water stored will be hundred meter. What is CV that is coefficient of velocity? That is point nine five. So we can first calculate the area that is pi by four into d square. So this is the area. Now. we have to determine the force exerted by the jet on this vertical plate so what is the formula that is f into a into v square so we are having rho so rho is 1000 a is area that is governed uh, that we have calculated we have to calculate this v theoretical so we can uh, we know from this uh, petot tube equation what is v theoretical v theoretical equal to root 2 gh so g is gravitational acceleration h is given to us so we can determine this v theoretical that is equal to 44.29 meter per second now we are using in turbine that is term called v actual so what is coefficient of velocity it is we know that the coefficient of velocity is equal to actual velocity about this Divided by this theoretical velocity, so we can calculate this theoretical uh, actual velocity. That is v actual equal to c v into v t h. So what is c v? That is given to us 0.95, and v t 